Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we are going to learn how to create XPath. So in your browser automation, whenever you need to identify or locate web elements, we normally use XPath as one of the most important and useful way of locating and identifying web elements. So if you are using Selenium or any other automation tool where you need to identify web elements for automation, we can use XPath and I'm going to go very basic step by step and explain how to use XPath, what is the syntax, how to use absolute and relative XPath. I'm also going to show you how to use methods like contains, text starts with or and 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 then there are some access methods like following preceding ancestor parent child that I'm going to discuss in the next part of this video. So I'm going to focus here and even if you do not have any prior knowledge on this topic, do not worry, I'm going to go very basic step by step. So let's get started and I will first go to Google and here we have this Google search box. So just in case I want to create an X path for this Google search box, I'm on a Chrome browser, so I will do a right click and I can say inspect and it will open a developer console and here you can see the DOM or document object model for this web page and this highlighted portion in blue, this is the area or this is the node for this particular search box and if I show you this, you can see this is an input tag and then we have attributes like name, type and all the all these attributes so using this tag input and any of these attributes I can create a X path for this particular search box or this search field so the syntax is forward slash forward slash and when I use double forward slash that means I am creating a relative X path and I will show you the difference in relative and absolute X path so here I am saying forward slash forward slash and I will give the tag name and then in square brackets I will give the attributes or the attribute name whichever attribute is available and then here I will say attributes equals to in single quotes I can give the value of that attribute so for example in this case I will say the tag name is input and then we have the name attributes where the value is equals q and this we can see here we have a name attribute where value is equals q so i will use this particular x path and to test this x path i can go to my browser again and i have this developer mode open you can also press f12 to get this developer mode or just inspect any element and now i will press ctrl f or command f on my keyboard which will bring up this area where i can test my x path so to show you more clearly I will change the orientation and yes now you can see this is here here I can write my X path so I am I'm seeing here double forward slash input and as I say this you can see it is saying it is showing us eight matching elements or nodes for this particular input tag so there are eight fields which have the tag as input however I will filter down even more so I will give a square packet and I will say name equals in single quotes I will say Q and now you can see it is saying it is finding a single element and it is highlighting the that particular area of that element and you can also see it is highlighting this area is highlighting the search box here so this is how you can write it also in Chrome we have some tools uh, that can help you or extension so if I go to the web store I will search for an extension called Eskri so that is E-S-K-R-Y and here this is a very good extension you can see this is here you can add it to your Chrome in my case it is already added and you can see it is here so this will help us to create X paths and then there is another very good extension called Crowpath and this is available both on Firefox and Chrome and you can see this is Chrome path and again this is a very good extension and in my case it is already added and I will just show you if you go to your browser and go to any web page and press F12 or inspect any, any, any element I am saying right click and inspect and let me take this down as earlier and yes so here on the main toolbar you will find Eskri 
and it is here and in S3 you will just highlight this button here this arrow and then you can go to any of the element and click it it will create a x path you can also create css in case you want css you can select this and then um, select the element or just x path so it has created a x path for the search box and you can select this and you can also test your x paths here and you can download your x paths or css in csv or in json so this is s3 and in case you want to see crow path you can go to here so when you go to your elements you will get this section where you will find crow path and here you can see we have crow path and you can see it is already giving us the relative x path and absolute x path for our search box and you can see in the relative x path we just have this input tag and then the attributes and its value and we use double forward slash however in absolute x path we start from the very first root node and go all the way until the element on that web page so here you can see in the absolute path for the same element it is starting from the root node which is HTML and then one by one it is going until to that particular element if you see the document object model or here DOM you can see the first element is HTML then we have body then we have some div and all these elements and here in the absolute path we use a single forward slash and it starts from the root element and goes all the way down now this is uh, this can be uh, this can break when you have any changes in your web application or in the objects because here we are starting from root and going all the way to that element if there is any change in between of this path any object changes or any section changes this particular x path will break however in relative x path there are there are very less chances of breakage because here we are just saying that I want to find an element where the tag is input and the name attributes is Q or the name value is Q that's it so wherever in the entire web page it finds a uh, element where tag is input and the name attributes value is Q it will just find it and we do not have to worry on any other object even if it changes it will not break so that is the difference between absolute and relative x paths and that is why we have we prefer relative x paths more than absolute x paths so this was the syntax and a very quick use of x paths now i will show you all these methods how you can use them so let me show you a more realistic application so i am going to a demo application where we have a login page so i can show you how exactly you can use it so you can see this is a demo orange hrm application i will also make the url available in the notes so that you can refer it so i will just create references here and all these notes will be available along with this video and here yes here you can see suppose i want to find xpath or i want to create xpath to locate this username text box i will do a right click and i will go to inspect and here i will you can see it is highlighting this area where the name for this particular field is txt username and id is txt username and type is text so we have these three attributes and the tag is input so i can very quickly create a x path using input tag and any of these elements let us see what does our tools give us so i'm going to s3 and i will click on this arrow and then i will highlight this and here it has given us this x path where it is, it is using two attributes type and name so you can also use x path where you can uh, give two attributes like this so here you can use something like this as well this is also valid so here we have used the tag name and then we have used two attributes type equals text and name equals txt username and in case you do not know the tag you can also give star so we can use regular expressions as well this will also work so if I go here I will highlight this and here I can change the x path so I'm giving this I will save and if I test it you can see it is still able to highlight it and it is able to find a unique element because count is one now I can just say here at name equals txt username and because this is unique if I save this and test it you can see it is still able to find it and 
here I can say I can say input because I know it is an input tag and I will save and it is able to find it let me also find the password so here you can see we have this password and it is able to find the password as well so now let us see uh, this contains so contains is a method that we can use in xpaths where we can give uh, attributes and in the value we can just give some particular text and this is very useful whenever we are dealing with a application where there are there is changes in the text or in the attributes and we have some part of the value which is constant and other parts is changing let me show you an example if I try to find a uh, xpath for this forgot your password link I will again use xcree and I will highlight this and you can see it has given us this xpath so if I click here it is highlighted here it has given us this xpath now let us say that for this particular link it is using text which is forgot your password let us say that there can be changes in the application and this forgot your password text can be changed to forgot password or uh, did you forgot your password or something like that so here we know that forgot is always present however we are not sure of the other part so in that case I can use contain so I can say something like this I will say this is going to be a anchor tag for link we use anchor and then I will say contains and I will give brackets and I can use the attribute text and after comma I will give the value so this is forgot and that's it I will save this and test it uh, this is not able to find out uh, let me just check again so here I will save this and test so here I am saying contains a text or I can use a star here I can do something like this as well or it should be I believe it should be this is a text method so it should be like this and I will save this and test it and yes you can see it is able to find it out and I can instead of star I can again make it back to A so I'll save this and test and yes you can see it is able to find out this particular link so contains is very useful whenever you have uh, some particular text or any attributes as well wherever you see that there is some part always constant but you are not uh, sure about the other part you can always use contains so this is how you can use contains and you can also use text attribute so for example uh, let us say I say here I want to find this uh, login panel if I find it out with s this particular login you can see here here the text is login panel so you can also use like this so it is saying text equals login panel so wherever you are having text of any particular element you can use the text method and you can give the text available so if I show you in the elements here you can see this is the text we are using so we can use the text method and we can give the actual text which is present and it will be able to find out that particular element now we can use starts with so for example I am going to my username again the username xpath and here I will say this is this is the input tag and I will use starts with and I will say I will give the attributes I will say at name and I will give txt user and I will save this and test and you can see it is still able to find out the username so this is again very useful when you have some elements where you have some attribute where the value is in the value there is some part which is common but the other part the 
last part is always changing in that case you can use starts with so for example if I say txt starts with name txt and I save this and test you can now see it is able to identify two elements because in our DOM we have two elements where the name attribute starts with txt and if I show you here if I show you in the DOM you can see we have txt username and we also have the password as well so if I show you password so password as well starts with the the name attribute starts with txt that is why it is able to identify two elements but I just want username so I will say txt I can say you here and that's it I will save this and it is able to identify a single element now the good thing here is you can use a combination of all these methods so for example I can say here input starts with at name equals txt u and then I can also say here or at id equals txt username and if I save this and test it you can still see it is able to identify that particular element and this is what exactly we need to learn for the next method which is or and and we can use or or and in our x path and here you can see I can use or and I can also say and here so both will work and let me just test and yes it is working so the difference here is when I say or when I say something like this or that means both of these that is starts with at name txt username and at id txt username both of these uh, like one of these from both of these two should be true and it will identify when I say and that means both of these should be true and then only it will identify a uh, element where both of these expressions are true so I can also here say something like I can say input tag at id equals txt username and at name equals txt username so I will save this and test it it is working and if I say or and save this and test it it is working fine so this is how you can also use or and 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 you can use a combination of all these so you can use contains along with or and 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 starts with you can use a combination of all this and in the coming session I will also show you all these other elements and their access methods as well so I hope this was useful and I will also keep this video in on my website automation step by step and under online courses you can find it under the selenium UI testing course and you can also find other courses here I hope this session was very useful I will meet you in the next session thank you for watching